Good afternoon, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here today. And I'm sure you're thinking, what are London Zoo doing at an event like this? Well, hopefully that's what we're going to explain to you today. We had to have a nice pun to our presentation, so we went for I Spy, did a little play on the logo there. But we're looking at conservation, education, and of course the Raspberry Pi, how we can fuse those together and work with children to actually get involved in conservation. So, what's ZSL's mission? Well, we promote and achieve the worldwide conservation uh, of animals and their habitats. It doesn't sound like an electronics kind of situation, but it can be. Recently, we produced something called Instant Wild. Now, Instant Wild's an app. So it's an app that runs on a smartphone, and it's a citizen science project. And what this app does is it shows you photographs taken by remote cameras that we place around the world, our conservation projects, and it beams them to your phone. And you look at these photos, you identify what's been taken in it, you identify the animal, and you let us know. And we've run this for about eight months now, and it's been incredibly popular. It runs like this on the app. You can subscribe to different cameras. You can subscribe to cameras in Kenya, in um, Sri Lanka, or even in the UK. And these are the photos we get. These are beamed live from our cameras. Cellular, so they're sent as 45K photographs on GPRS connections. Nice elephant shot. Also infrared, so we can get night shots of rhinos and very interesting leopards at the moment. And this little chap here, this was shot in Sri Lanka. He hasn't been seen for three years in the wild. Uh, this photo came in uh, last year, but this was a remarkable find because we were actually finding species in the wild and we were actually getting people, citizens in the UK, identifying them for us. So this is what we're tasked with. This is the camera we have now. They're off-the-shelf cameras. As I said, GSM antennas, LED flashes, and PIR sensors. This is what happens when hyenas and elephants destroy them. So <laughs> on the right there, that's a nice hyena chomp mark from the battery case. On the left, the elephant somehow the elephant stood on the camera and only managed to destroy the plastic around the antenna. The camera survived. This is what happens when a hyena chews through the screen, and we had to invent a little icon there for camera down, a hyena has destroyed it. <laughs> so the last photo here taken by a camera shows a hyena that's destroyed the particular camera, and we're looking at what's next for our project. Well, we have these issues with wildlife, they destroy our cameras, but we also have this fantastic opportunity to use the Raspberry Pi. We want to take the cameras we use, off-the-shelf cameras, and forget about that. We want to use the Raspberry Pi as our base. We want to have children build the cameras, at home, in, in a parent-based situation where they can put the camera in their garden and use it for a UK-wide sensor to spot wildlife. We want to get the children working with us at the zoo. We have 1.1 million people walk through the zoo every year. If we had a drop-in workshop where they can come and get involved in building Raspberry Pi-based cameras, and I'm looking at this camera module that we're looking at, well, Raspberry Pi looking at releasing soon. It's very interesting for this project. We're looking at how we can use the Raspberry Pi to achieve our goal. And we've been doing this software-based. This is working with Mozilla Foundation. We're working with kids here on HTML and CSS projects actually to get them to build animals in a kind of mashup scenario. So you have a few heads of a particular animal, legs, arms, feet, and you rebuild it and describe why your animal's endangered and how it lives within the wild. But the big situation here is a technology challenge. And so I'm going to introduce my colleague, um, Gary, and he's going to talk to you more about the technology challenge of this project. Hi everyone, so um, basically Alistair mentioned that at the moment we're using GSM cameras and um, there's a few problems with that. Um, so we've got a new technology challenge that we're looking at um, at the zoo. So we want to create a mesh camera network that we can penetrate into the depths of nature reserves um, so that we can have uh, cameras about two kilometers apart um, uh, with, a, um, with a basic um, uh, satellite phone in the middle of that mesh, mesh network that will distribute those images across. So that, that's our remit for the project. Um, but we have to do that within a budget of 70 to 80 pound uh, for each device, which obviously um, is a pretty tall order um, until Raspberry Pi came along. So the, the other thing that we want to do with this project is make sure that um, everybody can has, have access to these, uh, these devices. And um, it's all part of an open source project that we can share with other zoos, um, people at home. And, um, and some other projects uh, that we're currently getting involved in uh, with the BBC. So our initial concept was uh, we were going to use the Arduino, the XB um, radio. Uh, we were going to use the Adafruit TTL camera and a motion sensor. And this comes in about the right price. Um, but unfortunately, then they teased us with the Raspberry Pi, and we thought we could do an awful lot more. So that's just a, 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 a bit of a, 
a preview of, uh, or a network diagram of um, basically how we originally wanted it to look with the, um, the Arduino devices feeding back to the Raspberry Pi um, and then to the sat satellite phone. So the Raspberry Pi would be responsible for sending those, um, those images um, to a remote server that can be accessed from the iPhone application. So now we've got a, a really cheap uh, device that we can use. Um, we've got a whole host of options that, that are now available to us. Um, so we can easily access to these satellite phones, which was a little bit difficult with um, the previous technology we were looking at. Um, and we can do some, some pretty good things like zip files up and make sure that we're using low satellite am amounts of bandwidth. Um, but we can do a lot more than that. We can perform image analysis. We can use environmental sensors. We can, um, for example, we can get the temperature, um, the uh, humidity, and various other um, environmental conditions um, when, when we actually take the camera, uh, when we actually take the picture. We can also take time-lapse um, uh, images as well, um, and that's really good for conservation efforts um, because we can see how areas are changing over a period of time. Um, we can also start looking at doing some extra clever stuff, like um, uh, we can do some sound analysis. For example, if there were gunshots going off in the wild, we could then um, relay, relay that information back to um, the authorities. We can also monitor radio tags of animals that, are, are, that we're monitoring within the area as well. Then there's a new project that we're also looking at over the next couple of weeks called Predator. And this is um, an object analysis piece of software. Um, and as you can see here, um, basically at the moment they're flying these drones over national parks and they're able to recognize animals because the software has actually learned the shape of the animal. So this actually will allow us to track animals, um, for example, going in and out of water holes. And we can keep an eye on migration of certain animals as well, which is really good from a conservation uh, point of view. OK, so there's a couple of other things we can do with the Raspberry Pi as well, which we're looking at. And this is um, a marine application where we can measure, um, uh, we can review how the coral reefs are responding to environmental um, uh, conditions. And there's a couple of things that we're looking at there, and there's some sensors that we're currently working with um, for pH, uh, color temperature, and this sort of thing. So why are we here today? Um, we're here to show off the plan um, that we want to use Pi for. Um, we're here to network. Um, mentioned that this is an open source project. We don't want to work alone. We really want to collaborate with some of you guys in the room. So um, basically, when we're finished up here, if you want to have a chat with Alistair or I afterwards, um, We'd, we'd love to get you involved. If you've got an area of technical expertise that you think may be useful to, for the project, we'd love to hear from you. The other reason we're here is because we'd really like the Raspberry Pi team to give us a tech preview of their camera. <laughs> and um, yeah, as I said, we'd, we'd love to hear from you. So um, we've got a blog at the moment on, on this web address. Um, so if you want to collaborate after the event, um, you'll find a few more details here. So thank you very much. Cheers.